Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The capabilities of the United States Navy are globally recognized. Its large fleet and different vessels demonstrate its power. Included within this group are equally powerful submarine capabilities. The United States Submarine Force consists of four operational classes, Ohio, Los Angeles, Seawolf, and Virginia, all of which are nuclear-powered. They are equipped with a wide range of weaponry, including torpedoes and cruise missiles. Such capabilities allow them to work on different types of missions, like anti-submarine warfare, intelligence gathering, or strike missions. Behind this arsenal is a crew that constantly works with the latest technological tools to keep these systems functional and operational. It starts with the torpedo loading, where, from port-specialized cranes, transfer the munitions to the upper section of the submarine hull. Here, there are external hatches or access ports, where the crew can insert the torpedo and hand it over to the internal storage rack of the submarine. As they are potentially dangerous elements, this process requires prior hours of training and exercises carried out throughout the globe. You got the shorty over there? Yeah. First of all, first of all, stand by. You know, in my opinion, this gives just another uh, tool in our commander's toolbox, the ability to reload a U.S. submarine in, uh, in an Australian port and get the ship right back into the fight. Once inside the submarine, the crew must prepare this ammunition for use and launch. This process follows a series of steps and requires the coordination and attention of the members in charge of the operation. Firstly, the breach door in the torpedo room is opened to load the torpedo into the tube. Power is turned on for torpedo warm-up, and fire control programs are uploaded. Upon receiving the launch command and ensuring interlocks are satisfied, high-pressure water is thrust into the tube, ejecting the torpedo forcefully. These high pressures allow the torpedo to eject at high speeds, which can vary depending on the class of torpedo and submarine. Lightweight and heavyweight torpedoes have speeds that range from 20 to 50 knots. However, some technologies that use supercavitation allow them to reach speeds of 200 knots. Once outside the submarine, the torpedo uses its programming to be guided into the target. Its speed and explosive power are enough to damage an enemy vessel critically. Although torpedoes are usually associated with submarines, they're not the only vessels capable of launching such weapons. With their extensive arsenal, the destroyers also include torpedo launching systems for anti-submarine and anti-ship warfare. Their loading begins with careful planning and preparation, ensuring the necessary personnel and equipment are available. Similar to the process with submarines, Initially, the torpedoes are transferred to the vessel's deck, which position the weapons near the launchers.
The crew members are responsible for inserting the torpedoes into the launching system, usually a Mark 32 surface tube. This system is one of the most used by the U.S. forces and other allied countries since the 60s. Due to its versatility, it has remained in force over the years with only slight improvements. This triple tube set can fire 12.75 inch torpedoes of various designs, including the Mark 44, Mark 46, Mark 50, and Mark 54. They are made from a fiberglass liner encased in metal that gives them enough strength to withstand the launching stresses and doesn't make them too heavy. This type of launcher works for compressed air in a rear chamber, creating the force necessary to eject the torpedo from the tube and propel it into the water. Some launches can be done remotely, but the system is designed to have manual firing controls as a backup. This launching control is connected to the high pressure air supply system on the ship that feeds the rear flask. Once the flask is ready, a valve is opened, letting the pressurized air flow into the tube and forcing it out into the water. Apart from this launching system, destroyers also have other types of weapons in the deck. This includes anti-submarine rocket launchers, such as a vertical launch anti-submarine rocket. These kinds of weapons use guidance systems like inertial navigation or GPS to steer the rocket in mid-air toward the target location. Once the position is set, the internal torpedo or depth charge is released from the rocket to its final approach. With the diversity of enemy vessels and ship types, it is necessary that the weapons of the ships go beyond the use of torpedoes. When there are aerial threats or small boats, destroyers must have ideal systems installed to counteract these dangers. This is seen with the close-in weapon system, which are a critical component of naval air defense. CIWS is used by mostly all classes of larger modern warships. They typically consist of a combination of a high-velocity gun, like a Gatling gun, a radar system that detects and tracks incoming threats, and a laser tracking system that further tracks and engages targets. Such a combination is necessary for the firing system to automatically fire the gun at any threat. It starts receiving data from the radar and laser and uses this data to determine the threat's range, bearing, and velocity. With proper calculations, the system sends the commands to the gun. Due to the complexity of this weapon, the CIWS is subjected to a rigorous testing program, ensuring that it is reliable and effective. This testing program covers a wide range, including environmental, functionality, accuracy, and interoperability exercises. With the success of these systems, new weapons are developed by various companies and applied in multiple scenarios. One of these is the Rolling Airframe Missile, or RAM, which is a lightweight infrared homing surface-to-air missile deployed by Raytheon. It is focused mostly on defending ships against flying threats, including aircraft, helicopters, and missiles. A solid fuel rocket motor powers the missile, which has a range of 2.4 miles. <laughs> it 
An infrared seeker mounted on its front allows this weapon to lock onto the target's heat signature with great precision. These missiles are launched from the MK-49 Guided Missile Launching System, which is reloaded by the crew using cranes on the deck. They are in charge of removing the missiles from their packaging following the necessary safety measures. And from here, they position and install the missile inside the launcher. Although these weapons have the latest technology and are capable of carrying out military actions with precision, the people behind this must be taken into account. These military forces require coordination and constantly developing skills. This is why naval formations were created. Modern navies utilize a diverse range of group formations to support sea control, power projection, and expeditionary warfare. Among those prominent formations, a carrier strike group is one of the most powerful types of naval formations. This group includes the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson, which works as its flagship, thanks to its array of weaponry and capabilities. Also, this group includes the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, USS Lake Champlain, and the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, USS Wayne E. Meyer. and USS Michael Murphy, responsible for protecting the CSG from submarines and surface threats. However, outside the US Navy, other military forces operate with similar organizations such as the case with the British Navy and its carrier strike group. This powerful naval formation is led by the HMS Queen Elizabeth, the largest aircraft carrier in British history. Following that comes a flotilla of destroyers and frigates from the UK and the Netherlands. All of them are equipped with sonar and torpedoes to detect and attack enemy submarines. Other types of formations include the Expeditionary Strike Group, which, unlike the Carrier Strike Groups, focuses on amphibious warfare and is led by an amphibious assault ship. Thanks to their rapid response to crisis situations, they are often deployed to key strategic regions around the world. With such versatility, the U.S. Navy's weapon systems and naval formations are the backbone of naval warfare. The technological prowess behind systems like missile defense or anti-submarine weapons allows the Navy to project its power. The strike groups allow the channeling of such power into a coordinated formation that provides an effective response to any challenge. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.